Hello guys and welcome to the full course on YAML. So in the next 30 minutes, I will show you what YAML is all about. And the best part is that we will define the statistics of famous Indian cricketer Sachin Tendulkar, also known as the master blaster using YAML. And in this process, you are going to learn YAML. So in this course, I will cover introduction to YAML, why YAML is so popular, what are the YAML data structures, how to use YAML and as I said, we'll define the profile of cricketer Sachin Tendulkar using YAML and then we are going to use Python to load YAML and to dump YAML into a file and we'll also see how you can read a composite YAML document using Python. And in the end, we'll see the use cases of YAML in DevOps such as Docker Compose, AWS Cloud Formation and Kubernetes. So let's get started. Now the first and foremost question, what is YAML? As I've already mentioned, YAML is short form or the abbreviation for YAML ain't markup language. This is a recursive abbreviation similar to GNU. That is GNU is not Unix. Uh, similarly, YAML is a recursive abbreviation as YAML ain't markup language. So YAML is a data serialization language which actually means to convert data from complex data structures into a byte stream for storage transfer distribution purpose on physical devices and we will see how yaml performs that yaml is designed to be human friendly and we'll see how it compares with other data serialization languages it uses unicode printable characters some of which provide structural information and the rest contains the data itself so you'll have some of the characters which will provide the structure for example the colons and space are used for key value pair and dashes are used for bulleted list so we'll understand all these components of yaml when we perform the hands-on exercise now about yaml so yaml was first introduced in 2001 which was written in perl in 2003 yaml was first shipped with programming language ruby and in 2004, the first specification was published by Clark Evans, Oren Benkiki, and Inge.net. So the current version is YAML 1.2.2, which was published in 2021. And this is the specification which we are going to see. So first and foremost question, what is data serialization? So we know that YAML is a data serialization language, but the question is, what is data serialization? So now let's take an example. You have your data in your system which is stored in a database now the question arises in what format you would store the data if you want to store it in a text file so either you can export the complete sql including the schema as well as the data into an sql file but that is not human readable the other problem is that if you want to transfer this data to any other system or any other system on the network which format would you utilize so this is very important in case of heterogeneous architecture. So the question is how would two heterogeneous computing architectures communicate? And this is where data serialization comes into picture. So using data serialization, you can either export the data into a file format, or you can transfer it over the network for any processing between different system or between different computing architectures. And there are some famous data serialization languages for example, ASN.1, that is abstract syntax notation one. Then you have CSV, which is comma separated values, which is very popular. Then you have XML, which is extensive markup language, which is quite old and quite relevant as well in present day. Then you have JSON, JavaScript object notation, which is one of the famous data serialization languages. And then you have SOAP. So these are the data serialization languages that are currently very popular. And if you want to read more about the data serialization languages, you can go to the comparison of data serialization formats on Wikipedia and understand more about them. Now let us understand the differences between YAML versus JSON and XML. So now let us compare YAML with JSON and XML. So we have the similar document in YAML and this is in JSON and this is in XML. So in YAML, the structure is very readable and very easy to write as compared to json where you have to define the curly bracket and the square brackets for different formats 
So if you forget to write one curly bracket or end the corresponding curly bracket of a data block, it will throw an error. In XML, your key values are separated in form of tags. So you have a key, and then you have a value, and then you close the key tag. So XML and JSON are comparatively much more difficult to read and write because of the defined structure. YAML is comparatively easy to read and write, and we will see it when we perform the hands-on. Now let us understand the YAML design goals, and we will compare it how these design goals have helped develop YAML and become it much more popular than it is right now. So first of all, YAML should be easily readable by humans. This is the first and foremost design goal, or you can say this is the first priority. Secondly, YAML data should be portable between programming languages. Third, YAML should match the native data structures of dynamic languages. Fourth, YAML should be expressive and extensible. And fifth, YAML should be easy to implement and use. And when we use YAML, you will feel that all these design goals are properly implemented in YAML. So let's start with YAML syntax. Now in YAML, you have mappings which correspond to key value pair. You have comments. You have sequences which are sort of list and we'll see and understand sequences in detail. Then you have scalars which is kind of string. You can have simple scalars. You can have quoted scalars. You can have scalars which enable escaping just like if you want to have new line escape or tab escape. Then you have scalars which enable block and we will see all these components while we are performing the hands-on. So let's start with the hands-on. So I'm here in my code editor and I can create a new file document.yml or I can save it as document.yml. So both the extension are considered to be correct. So either you can have .yml or .yml. So if you have any plugin in your code editor which supports YAML, so you will understand that as soon as you save a file as .yml or .yml, it will readily take the required format. So first and foremost syntax that we are going to understand is comments. So comments start with hash. Here we have the profile of the cricketer. And first of all, we will start with the comment. So YAML can be saved as .yml or .yml and this is profile of cricketer so this is our comment so the next is mapping so mapping is a key value pair which is separated by colon and space so let us understand First of all, the mappings. So we will define the profile using mappings and this corresponds to the key value pair. So for example, for us, our player name is Sachin Tendulkar. And you can write the full name as well. Full name as Sachin Amish Tendulkar age as 48 so here you can see this automatically takes it as int and this is a string so here i have identifier this is string this is also a string this is also a string and this is an int now this can be float so this is the float value you can define infinity as well so if you write this is special value this hyphen dot inf this specifies infinity You can have a boolean value and this is represented as a flag here
and we can in fact have a single quoted string as well. So these are the mappings for our key and value pairs and we have used scalars which are similar to text. This is integer, this is float, infinity, boolean, another scalar. So these are the basic key value pair that we have defined. All right, so the next is sequence. So sequence can be used to create list. So in sequences, suppose we want to define teams, I can specify as single dash. And as soon as you put a single dash, it is identifying that, that this is a list. So I can have teams as in India, Mumbai, Yorkshire, Mumbai Indians and Asia 11. So these are the teams and this is a list and inside this list you have five values and these five values are defined here. You can also define you can also define list in a JSON format which is like this comma separated inside a square. So this is also a list of three values. You have zero, one, two, three values in a similar way of JSON style. And just keep in remember that after this colon, you need to have a space everywhere, wherever you are using it. So we can have nested list as well. So to show that, let, let me convert it to the Dash separated list and I can define a nested list so this would be my nested list and in bowling And so these are my nested list and you can see here inside skills if I go to batting so this skills it has the first value batting which is inside a list and it has two values inside batting style that is 0 and 1. So these are the nested list and it can be used to define dictionaries as well is what we have similar in python just to keep in mind this indentation is variable so if you can have so you can have no indentation at all and that is fine you can have an indentation of tab that is also fine you can have two tabs that is also fine but the only thing is that the indentation or the elements of this block should be at the same level. Now, if I have mismatch in levels, it will show me an error and it is not accurate. So whatever indentation you keep, it's up to you, probably two tab, one tab, two spaces, depending upon how, how it's easy for you to, but the elements of this block should be in the same level. So this was all about list. And in the next video, we will talk about scalars. All right, so now let us understand scalars. Now, scalars can be of multiple type. So we can have an unquoted scalar, like this is the unquoted scalar. So scalar is similar to string. And then you have single quoted scalar, where you can use single quotes and then double quoted scalar, which also allows escape characters such as slash n and slash t. So you can also have a multiple line scalar, which works on multiple line using a pipe operator. So let us work with scalars now. So as I've mentioned, we can have a scalar with no code and we can see here, this is a scalar with no code and we can have a scalar value with single code. For example, 
if you had to have full name you can have a single quote and you can put the full name so this is the scalar value with single quotes you can have a scalar value with double quote as well where you can put sequence escapes as well as special characters for example I can use and an escape character like this so this is a scalar value with double quotation with escape character you can also have scalar value with multiple lines so suppose you want to have a description you can use the pipe operator and just after the space we will just copy a couple of lines here and you can see it is accepting it without any errors all right that's done and this description is complete so this is a scalar value with multiple lines and this is very helpful if you want to put a script suppose in case of a unix or shell script into this file which can which you can utilize to spin up a docker machine i will talk about this in a use case later so this is all about scalars we have seen the scalar value with multiple lines with escape and with escape sequence and double quotation and with single quotes so if you put an escape sequence in a single quote it will not recognize it and it will try to print it as it is so this is not useful so whenever you are using an escape sequence keep in mind you have to use double quotes so this was all about your scalars and in the next video we are going to talk about keys with double quotes now let us take an example where we need to have a key which contains some special characters or an escape character in that case you need to have quotes for the keys as well so let us see in the example so the example of keys with double quote is so we can have keys with special character we can have keys with spaces for example or so it is perfectly fine but if you want to use an escape sequence so you need to use double quotes so these are the type of keys that you can use when you are utilizing keys with special characters however this would be not recommended if you have to use some keys which definitely require some special characters i would recommend you to use double quotation marks now you can include other document in yaml you need to define these documents with use of three dashes so let us see with an example how you can include two documents into another document so what we'll do we'll first create a new file which is batting stats.yml and one other file bowling stats.yml all right so if i go to batting stats.yml we will quickly define some of the batting stats so and we'll define bowling stats so let us define the bowling stats all right so these are our bowling stats and these are batting stats so what i can do i will just copy these batting stats and i will go to my document of 
and I can define with three dashes. And I'll paste it and again three dashes. Just copy the bowling tags and here in the top I can have three dots as player statistics. So these are the three documents which have combined the player statistics, the batting stats and the bowling stats to define the complete profile. So if you see here, let me just zoom out. So we have the complete details here in the three documents. All right, so let us read this ML file that we have written using a Python code. So I'm going to create a file main.py and I have copied the, from my document.ml that I've written, the player statistic part into a different document, sachin.yml, and we will read this sachin.yml through our Python code. So first and foremost, to read the YAML file from the Python code, you need to import a library, YAML. And I will declare my file name that into a variable, which I can change later as per my requirement. First of all, I have to open this file, file name, and I will open it as F. And then I will load the data from the YAML file using the YAML dot load function where I will specify the object file name and I will specify the loader. So I'm going to use a loader yaml dot full loader. So it will load the complete document. Now I can just print the keys and values from the data into a required format and I will just write print keys and I will use an arrow key to separate these keys and values. So in this code I've just opened the YAML file and displayed this data using the following format. So let us execute this code and I will run this and you can see we have the complete data player name Sachin Tandulkar, full name Sachin Ramesh Tandulkar and you can see here in the scalar field in the key value pair born in we have used the double quote to include the escape sequence and it has displayed the escape sequence as per we have used. The number of fans is infinity minus INF and three centuries INF. Here we have height 5.5, which is a float, and year of birth is 1973. Then inside teams, we have the complete detail. All right. Then you have a description as per the description we have written. So let's check the type of the data that we have for these values. So let us do one thing. I will also print the type of these values alongside it. So apart from this, I will just include a simple code with another arrow which will have type of values and I will execute this again in the first clear screen. And you can see here, this is string, string, age is int, retired is boolean, three centuries and NAN which is float, number of fans is infinity which is float, height is float, year of birth is string. This is list, this is also a list, and then this is a string. So in this way, we have specified the values type and we have seen how we can use it to read the specific type of values. All right, so let us see how you can write YAML. So I've converted the YAML data into JSON and this is data represented in a JSON format. Now I can just print it, I can just print the YAML data using the function yaml dot dumb data and if I try it here 
you will have the complete data in the YAML format. Now the one thing is to note is that this is the key and value are in a different format. It doesn't matter actually. So as soon as you have a key and value pair, it doesn't matter where the value lies, whether it's in the start of the document or at the end of the document to a programming language. So it doesn't matter. However, for readability purpose, it matters so you can organize it on your own. So it doesn't matter in a programming purpose. If I want, I can also write it to a file. So to write to a file, you can first create the object by defining the file. So I will name it as generated.yaml and I will open this file in a right mode and I can just write yaml dot dom data and then I can just close the file. So if I run this code and if I check here I should have a file generated dot yaml which has the complete generated yaml code. So this was about how you can write data into YAML using Python. Now if we talk about our YAML code, we had earlier saved this document dot YAML as a composition of multiple YAML documents. So if you see here document dot YAML, it had three documents which had the player statistics and the batting stats and the bowling stats. Now to read this, first of all, if we have this code executed with the same document which we had created, which had multiple embedded YAML document, so it will give you an error that uh, expected a single document in the stream. So we can, we need to update our code so that it works with a document which has multiple embedded YAML document. So for that, we need to use another function. So we'll just load all and f and I will define loader is equal to yaml dot full loader all right and I will just specify a loop for streams in data and I will just update this code and here I will have streams dot items and if I run this code you will have all the data as per your requirement so here you have matches and then you have your overs and maidens and wickets which is part of the third document and this is part of the second document and this is part of your first document so in this way you can utilize the function load all to load multiple stream of document or multiple stream of yaml document that is inside a single yaml document all right so let's talk about the use cases of yaml so the most popular use cases of yaml are in DevOps, specifically for Docker Compose, where you write the Docker Compose file using YAML. And this is a sample code for Docker Compose. The second use case is in Kubernetes, where you define various resources of Kubernetes using YAML. And it has a, a specific specification for each uh, component of Kubernetes. And third, you can use YAML in CloudFormation to define the template to load your resources in AWS. All right, so the first use case uh, I was discussing about was Docker Compose. So you can specify a Docker Compose file which you can utilize to build up images or to execute containers or to run the containers. So there's a specific format of this Docker Compose file and a specific YAML keywords that you need to define, for example, version and services. And these are the specific keywords and the volumes and networks. Similarly, then you have AWS CloudFormation, where you can use CloudFormation to define your infrastructure as a code, and you can use it to deploy resources on the AWS Cloud. So this is a sample code, and there are some specific key that you need to define. And for example, for parameters, you should have the key name, and then in the description, what type of uh, parameter it is. Then there are some constraint description, so constraint description have the required you know constraints for example the allowed pattern 
which is the regex code for the IP address. And so this is the template for cloud formation using YAML. And last example is of Kubernetes, where you can use it to specify the Kubernetes resources. For example, here I'm showing you the YAML file to spin up a service in Kubernetes, and you can provide the kind and API version. And this is as per the documentation. There are some reserved keywords that you have to provide to identify the required service and then the metadata spec etc when you work with kubernetes you will know what type of keywords are reserved in case of this yaml file and one more use case that i would like to show you is of this yaml cert.yml so the use case is of this block content which you can utilize to run or execute any complete code so you can reference the code from this block it will provide you the value for example in this uh, script i'm using this bash script and i can reference this to load a script onto the terminal so these are the use case of yaml thanks very much for watching this video and in case if you like it please give a thumbs up and share and please subscribe my channel for more such videos thank you and have a good day